guess what? We're back. And you know what we're doing? We're cooking something. You know what we're doing? It. We're gonna make it more simple. We're gonna make it better. We're gonna make it more delicious. Okay, maybe not all those things. And to be honest with you, I've never tried this before. But as most of you know, I am a Ukrainian kind of guy, right? And Ukrainians are famous for inventing. I mean, mind, mind you, some Russians might be um, kind of testy with this one, and Polish people, and a bunch of other countries that I don't or can't say their name. But Ukrainians are famous for making pierogies. So my grandmother, my fondest memory is of my grandmother making pierogies. And I know it was a full day thing. It literally took her hours. Even like a full day from morning till night and she would bust out like three, four hundred of these things. And a lot of that time took making the dough, rising, all that stuff, rolling it out. So I have found an easier way to make pierogies and I'm gonna share it with you. And as being a resident or the resident professional Ukrainian here, I'm gonna to try to do it all in a quarter of that time, maybe even less, and 100% way less work. My grandmother might roll in her grave after watching this, but to be honest with you, it's just way easier and I'm a lazy kind of guy. So if I can make it easier, I will. So let's get started with what we need. Potatoes. Uh, I'm not gonna make 300 like grandma, but I am gonna make a lot. And I'm not sure if this is enough, but I got three massive potatoes. We're also gonna need onions. Garlic. This is how I make my garlic. I don't know if you guys know. So what I do is I take garlic cloves that you can buy from the grocery store. They're already peeled. They're already like, all you have to do is cut the sort of the hard parts at the end of them. I throw them in my food processor, chop the hell out of them, and then throw them in the freezer. Next, we are going to need some butter. I mean, essentially we're making mashed potatoes, right? So mashed potatoes are what's the flavor, the gush that's inside of a pierogi. We need cheese. Oh, salt. Just to keep it healthy. We'll use some sea salt instead of regular salt. Garlic salt. You can add pepper if you want. We're just gonna do it super the way I remember grandma used to make it. But instead of dough, we're gonna try using wontons. Wonton, what is this? Dumpling wrappers. Pre-made, they're super thin, no dough involved. So let's see how these stack up. Cherie's got me this. And I think it's for people who have arthritis in their hands because it doesn't hurt my hands at all to use it. And it's pretty awesome. I cut these into smaller cubes. This way they cook faster. Just make your regular bomb ass Mashed potatoes, so I had a huge brain front there. Okay, so uh, water's boiling. We're not boiling, it's heating up. We have cut our potatoes already. And while we're waiting for the rest of it to, the water to boil so we can dump our potatoes in, we can um, cut up the rest of our stuff. So the onions and garlic, I'm gonna add it to some butter, fry it up, and then put it in the mashed potatoes when they're done. I might even suggest just to grate them. We're going to chop them super fine. Freeze dried garlic, I'm going to put it back in the freezer, so I just want to take a chunk right now. How easy this is. Boom. Garlic done. So I think, um, based on the amount of potatoes I use, I'm going to go with about a third of a brick of cheese. Okay, that's good. So butter-wise, you can use margarine too. Uh, based on the amount of potatoes, I'm gonna go with probably half of this. I might add more later. And let's get to frying. I'm just gonna fry this up, bring it back, show you what it looks like, and then we'll start combining. I completely forgot, we need one egg, which we need to crack, dump, that's our cooked onions with butter and 
garlic. Those are mashed potato soup, which we're gonna turn into mashed potatoes soon. Oh, leave a little bit of water in there. Now, add all. Add this guy. All that in there. I tell you, right now it smells super Ukrainian in here. It just smells like. Coming to a house where there's Ukrainians, it always smells like garlic, especially if one of them is a cook. Okay, so we've got that in there. Keep the burner on just low heat. Now we're gonna add our cheese. I don't think that's enough. That's good. Okay, let's start mashing. Touch of salt, a little bit of chives. Oh. Pierogies and sour cream are probably my favorite thing to eat, Ukrainian style. What we're gonna do is we're gonna place these, and each one of these will be a tiny pierogi. And if you're lazy, you can just make them round. I mean, I don't think they have to be half moons, but we're gonna try to actually just make them little tiny pierogies, which I'm not really excited about. I'd rather just eat a big one, it's not, but we'll do that. So we'll just lay them out. Now we're gonna take our egg batter, and really, you just wanna um, get the corners, Oops. the sides, but I'm just gonna slop it on here too. I don't care if it gets the center too. Pretty flowery. And what the egg does is it seals the dough together so that um, when you put in the water in the boiling water, it doesn't open up. Alright, we got a delicious potato mix. Key is not to add too much, or else you won't be able to seal them. Again, it's the first time I'm doing this, so I don't even know how much to add. I'm just gonna go with that. Let's see if I'm adding too much. So here we go. Okay, that's good. That's a good amount. It's like quarter teaspoon, quarter tablespoon. Let's see about that much. And then you just fold it over. Like you're rolling a joint, you know? And close it. Once when the potato starts to ooze out, then you know it's too much. try all the little tricks. Oh my god, I lost like half a liter of water. Mm. And now I'm going to add pierogies. You can see them just going there. Like that. The dough is so thin that you only need a few minutes for them to boil. Alright, got this. Done. Done. No, we can keep this on because we're going to boil some more. I'll pull them out and put them onto a plate, which of course I don't have ready. Okay. 
impossible. All right, so let's see how that looks. All out at once. Ooh, shit, we dropped one. Let the water sit a bit. Put on a plate. Boom. They all work. I'm kind of sloppy, I'm not going to lie, but. I don't know if we should fry them. Last time she wants to fry them. Be right back. Top tip don't boil them too long because you know what? These things are super fast. Like regular pierogies, I think, take two to five minutes to boil. These things, maybe a minute and a half max. Two minutes max. A one to two minutes. Keep your eye on them. And especially if you're planning on fly frying them after because. If they get too soft, they get this sort of layer on top of them, slimy thing, and it'll just stick to the pan no much matter how much butter you use. So after three attempts, a lot of swearing, um, we managed to come up with this. Pierogies. So we've laid them on top of each other so they're super nice and pretty. Tony likes a bit of pepper on hers. We're gonna sprinkle a little pepper across the top. Some sexy chives, which I always love to add to everything because it gives that little bit of a color, makes it look pretty. And boom. And there you go. We made pierogies. What the hell? I just want to say a special thanks to my grandmother who has passed away. Both grandmothers. They both made pierogies. They both did such an awesome job, very unique in themselves. And I think if they were looking down on me, they would be proud. At least that I made something Ukrainian anyways, Ukrainian-esque. Just in case you want to see what happened to the first batch, I mean, I'm going to eat these. Don't get me wrong. But they are a bit of a mess. They all kind of stuck to each other, got weird and stuff, you know, but super edible. Best thing about being a cook, you present the nice ones, but then you get to eat the good stuff too. All right. Moment of truth? Moment of truth. God is good, God is great. Thank you for the food and bless the hand of the bread. Thanks. Good luck. Want some sour cream? No, I'll just try it plain. Thank you. Mm. You taste the oxtail? Mm-hmm. It's a good mix or no? That's good. Yeah? Delicious. Awesome. I'm glad you like it. Thank you. I always make the stuff specific to you, so. The real way you're supposed to eat it. Full of sour cream, man. It's the only way to eat this. That's good. Mmm. That's good, it tastes like a pierogi. Okay. Oh, that potatoes are really good inside. Let's try this oxtail. Jamaican, Jamaican, no. Ukrainian, Jamaican, Ukrainian. Well, it's different. Oh yeah, that's a huge difference. Let me try without sour cream. Wow. It tastes completely different. Mm -hmm. You should try one without the stuff in it. Good job, Drew. Thank you.